Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to The Bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from Monica. Let's listen to what Monica has to say. Hi Lloyd, this is Monica Owens. Um, you know me from being a patron of yours. I just wanted to call and let you know that I really, really appreciate everything that you do, as you well know. Um, I just lost a close friend of mine in August. She was a coworker, and we did the same job function, so we were pretty close, and we also did some things outside of work. She was 46 years old and apparently healthy from all indications, but she passed away suddenly in the middle of the work day, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the um, 25th of August. And since then, I have been struggling because when you're in the witness faith, when you're when you're in the cult, you think you have everything figured out, you know, life and death and going to the funeral before I would have been like approaching other people and try to comfort them and, you know, saying that she's going to be resurrected. And if you'd like to know more, you know, this, that and the other, of course, because the witnesses tend to to see uh, death and tragedy as a great big opportunity. And I was the same way back when I was in. But now it's like I have the fewest answers in the room rather than the most answers. I used to think where I used to think I had everything all figured out. Um, now I realize I have nothing figured out. And her death made absolutely no sense. And I am just spinning from it. And of course, when this stuff comes up, everybody's like sending thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. And I really just don't know how to respond to that sometimes. And also I find myself at a loss for words when I'm trying to comfort somebody else. It's like, I don't want to say I'm sending thoughts and prayers because I don't really buy into that whole scenario that there's a God out there for each and every one of us personally interested and would, you know, help us out rather than help somebody else who's maybe in worse in a worse position. And uh, what's making this even worse is my mom has been diagnosed with a terminal illness and she's 77 years old. She was born and raised as a Seventh-day Adventist. And so she's she was pretty familiar with the Jehovah's Witness cult as it says as an offshoot. So when I started getting involved in it, when I was about 18 and starting to do the Bible study, she was pretty firmly against it, but she let me do what I was going to do. And of course I got baptized and, and the rest is history, but she keeps asking me, what do I believe is going to happen when we die? And do I believe in God anymore? And the answer is really no. I don't see any evidence for one. And I certainly don't see any evidence that, um, there's any rhyme or reason to any of, of the things that go on here on the earth. And it's just, I I go to a therapist for this and I also try to fill the void with research. And I look to, you know, materials, books, your videos, your book. It's been immensely helpful, but I still in the back of my mind have this feeling like I used to know what to say to people, I used to know what to expect. I used to have everything, what I thought was figured out. And it's, and it kind of reminds me of people when they leave Bethel, it's like you spent your entire life at Bethel, let's say, and you never went and got any kind of education or any kind of a job skill set. And now this, at this point in your life, you're way back where you should have been when maybe you were just graduating high school. It's like, I feel like I was emotionally stopped and spiritually stopped at 18 when I joined the cult. And now that I'm 51 years old, I don't have anything figured out now that I'm out of it. So I, I just wanted to put that out there. I know that some people may be able to relate to that. Um, it's something that's just in the forefront right now because of just losing my friend and also the way things are with my mom. So um, again, I, I really appreciate everything that you do. And um, thank you so much for all of your work. And if you wanted to put this on your channel, that's perfectly fine. I'm not worried at all about my name being out there. I'm uh, honored to be on your credits er, on your videos. So uh, thank you again. Thank you so much, Monica. Lovely to have you call in. Monica and I tweet each other sometimes on Twitter. And uh, Monica is, as she mentioned, a patron. So lovely to have you call in, Monica. Wow. Um, so much to unpack there. Thank you for being so open about your situation and your struggles. 
well done for seeing a therapist. That would be my first piece of advice. I guess my only question would be, have you explained all this to your therapist? You know, are they familiar with this specific issue that you're having to grapple with? Um, but yeah, they are definitely better positioned <laughs> to give you advice on mental health than I am. And you're also um, to be commended. Sounds very JW, that, doesn't it? You're to be commended, sister, <laughs> for doing research, you know? When our brains are struggling to make sense of life and these big issues surrounding death and mortality and what have you, there's this latent cult coding that's sitting there waiting to kick in. And the way to combat it, the way to fight it is with with information, with actual factual knowledge and sound logical argumentation, which you'll get through your research. So seeing a therapist, doing research, sounds like you are making headway. You're going in the right direction. If you're interested in my personal feedback on what essentially amounts to grappling with mortality and with not having all the answers, I think my first instinct would be to say it's perfectly normal to be feeling uncertain, having been in a situation where you once felt like you had all the answers, to not having all the answers, it's perfectly normal to feel the way you feel. You know, there's nothing unusual about it. You're not alone. Lots of people listening to your message will relate. Because it's great when you have all the answers, isn't it? It's <laughs> You get to feel so superior. You get to feel like you've got it all figured out. And you're the font of knowledge that everyone needs to run to. Because, hey, just by sheer lottery of birth, I've been born into the one and only true religion or I've been recruited into the one and only true religion because God has drawn me and now I've got it all figured out. I've got all the answers. You just need to come to me and I've got it there. And if I'm not certain about any particular subject, I know where to point you to. Watchtower Online Library, JW Library. They'll have all the answers that I don't have. It's a wonderful situation to be in, or how can I put it? A very confidence-boosting situation to be in when you don't need to think anymore. You don't need to investigate. You don't really need to do research because everything's just there. It's just at your disposal, this one and only absolute truth. It's very, very intoxicating, isn't it? when you're in that situation, and then when you wake up to the fact that it isn't true, that it's actually just one of many cons that are being perpetuated in the name of religion, then you've got to do some legwork. Then you've got to figure things out. But for me, one of the biggest realizations upon getting out of a cult was to realize that as lovely as it would be for there to be this absolute truth. Um, yes, excuse me. Um, my name's Lloyd Evans. I'd like to order some absolute truth, please. Um, do you do 24-hour delivery? <laughs> would it be wonderful if we could order ourselves some absolute truth? Not how it works. Not how it works. Life, the universe, and everything is extremely complicated. Uh, it can't be boiled down to the number 42, I'm afraid. <laughs> it can't just be neatly packaged up in this, here's the absolute truth bundle, and you buy this and everything makes sense. I think in the situation you're describing, that's of losing a friend and dealing with potentially losing your mother, I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, no answers are better than wrong answers. 
I would rather have no answers in the face of death and bereavement than wrong answers. It's okay to not have an answer. It's okay to not know what to say. I would rather hear from someone, if I lost someone close to me, I would rather hear, I don't know what to say, Lloyd, than, oh, I'm sending you thoughts and prayers. Or, I know your mother's in a better place now. You know, God moves in mysterious ways and he has a plan. I'd rather just have the, I don't know what to say, Lloyd. Because I think we can all relate to that. The main thing is, are you able to extend basic human compassion when others are undergoing hardship? And that compassion doesn't need to be in the form of this big long lecture about what death really means and where you can go to to find satisfying answers. Sometimes it's just about being there for someone and listening to them. Let's say it's other colleagues in the office who are struggling or maybe your colleague's family I didn't know, I don't know whether they have any family um, when you're coming into contact with people who are grieving I think just listening frankly is a wonderful skill to bring to that situation not enough people just listen you know not enough people say, you know what, I don't have any anything to say here. This is just a tragedy. And I guess what I just want to do more than anything is let you know that I'm here for you. I want to be a support for you. And if you just need to vent, you know, even in the middle of the night at, say, two or three in the morning, I want you to know that you can call me because I'm here for you. That's so much more meaningful than, oh, I'd like to give you some thoughts and prayers. Here's, here's thoughts and prayers in the form of a card. Here, have this card. Oh, my job now is done. I have administered thoughts and prayers. Sorry, I'd rather have the sincere concern and the willingness to listen when bad things happen, when there is pain and, and loss. I think that's of far more use but never, ever feel bad, Monica, for not having all the answers. No one has all the answers. We're all just trying to figure this thing called the universe out. And sometimes the universe throws a curveball. Sometimes we find ourselves in good situations. Sometimes we find ourselves in bad situations. Sometimes life just sucks. And... All we can do is just show kindness to each other. That's the only answer I can give. Kindness makes up for a lot. Kindness is more important than giving people wrong answers. So I hope some or all of that has been useful for you. Thank you so much for calling in. If you would like to call in and leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message on my channel. But that's all I have time for. Thank you so much for watching.